Hi there, it's Marzena. This project is not really about a specific character, but it's more like a scene that has been stuck in my head for a while now. Of course, this is still a doll customization video, so there will be a character included, don't worry. But I want you to keep in mind that it is more about the scenery in general, and rather about a specific vibe than a specific character. I call it the butterfly meadow. Because the character itself was not that important here, I chose Twyla. I just thought that her smaller, younger sister body will allow me to focus more on the overall scenery. I just had to shrunk her head a little bit more than usual, if possible. As usual, customization starts with doll preparation. Cutting the hair as short as possible. Heating up the head in a freshly boiled water. Decapitation. Removing all the nasty glue and remaining hair plugs through the neck hole. Wiping off the factory face with 100% acetone. And in my case, head shrinking. I use a slow shrinking method and usually repeat the process twice, but this time I also did a third soaking, due to the smaller body I was working with this time. I snip-snapped her ears off and marked where I wanted her new hair to be. Like with my last unicorn doll, it will be a main kind of a hairstyle, cause she's a part horse after all. Oh. Haven't I mentioned that she's supposed to be a pastel unicorn? Oh well, now you know. For the reroute I picked white, pink and violet yarn in pretty pastel shades. I prepared the scalp by mixing acrylic paints in colors similar to the yarn and applying them in two layers for better coverage. Then I fixed everything under a layer of watered-down mud patch. That, from my experience, prevents the paint from chipping during the reroute. After many, many hours of head stubbing, voila! Pretty pastel mane. I secured the new hair with high-tech glue and left it for a couple of days to properly dry. When the glue finally cured, I widened the neck hole a bit. Now for the body, cause it also needs some attention. With acetone-free nail polish remover, I removed her silver markings. Uh, at least I tried, they were really stubborn. In the end, I abandoned this mission, trimmed down the neck pack and slimmed down the neck itself. I heated up the head a little with a hair dryer and put it back on the neck. Worked great. Recently I like smoothing out the head to neck transition, so that's what I did here. Time to turn our girl into a cozy burrito. With a hand drill I drilled the holes for new ears. Then I widened those holes with my micromotor. I glued in the wire reinforcement and I could start sculpting. Using epoxy sculpt, I covered the remaining parts of her scalp and I created a pair of brand new horse ears. Oh! And I almost forgot about her horn. On the next day I sanded down the epoxy to make the transition into the vinyl face as smooth as possible. That is a pretty tricky part, due to big differences between both materials. And this is why face modifications are something that most doll customizers, including me, would rather avoid. But well, when you must, you must. 
three layers of Mr. Super Clear and I could finally start with the face up. For a brief moment I thought I could color match the epoxy with the doll just by using pan pastels. But I very quickly realized that it won't work here, so I needed to use acrylics. I tried to use them only on my sculpted parts, not the face itself, and even it out later with pastels. It definitely wasn't the easiest part, but after a few layers of pastels and varnish, it worked. The next step was to add some dimension to the face by blushing and shading it. I used different shades of purple for shades, pink for blush and baby blue for highlights. In my last video, during face-up footage, I took the time to talk a little about the new Monster High dolls and my personal thoughts about them. I also shared some of my concerns about my channel's future, in light of a possible absence of suitable doll bases for my projects. I might have been a little overdramatic. I am sure that when the problem will eventually appear, I will find some solution for it. After all, I am quite good solution seeker. Anyway, I never expected such a huge feedback from people who were really willing to support my channel with their old Monster High dolls. This is truly an amazing gesture and I am speechless. So I have a PO box now for everyone who wants to support me in that manner. I already need to shout out a big thank you to Toy Collector Look for sending me his old girls and a boy, and to Anne from The Bunny Act for her package. I love those dolls to the moon and back. You gave my channel months of peaceful mind, and that is priceless. I am so honored to have supporters who believe in my art this much. And I am so happy that I will be able to give your old ghouls a second life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As you probably noticed from this footage so far, this particular face-up was pretty much a pain in the butt. Whatever I drew, I had to erase a minute later. I tried to push forward, but I was constantly unhappy with where it was going. So eventually, in like one third of the face-up, I decided to start over. Oh, well, it's never fun to scrap all your work to zero and start from scratch, again, but you just need to follow your guts, you know? If you feel like you're going nowhere, that's a turn back sign. Not everything has to turn out great from a first try. Also, there are just those days when even easy tasks turn to shit, don't you agree? I guess this was one of them. I really love the face sculpt on Twyla. I've worked on way trickier dolls' faces without any bigger problems, so I really thought that this one will be a walk in a park. And yet, right from the beginning. Ugh. In Poland, we have a saying that fate is throwing logs under our feet. Logs under our feet. Keep this sentence in mind for later, please.
Okay, I'm pretty sure that this decision on starting from scratch really paid off and I managed to make some fairly decent progress. But even though I liked the new eyes, I wasn't sure about the whole face expression. I wanted her to look innocent and calm yet intrigued. And with these eyes, she looked like she was too high on pixie dust, if you know what I mean. Luckily, I could just redraw her irises and there was no need for starting from scratch again. To be honest, I liked the previous eyes better, but for the sake of her overall look, I'm sure that it was another good decision. I painted the horn with white acrylics and shaded it a little at the base with pink pan pastel. I wanted to give it some magical shine, so I applied a thin layer of UV resin, cured it slightly with UV torch and wrapped in an opalescent nail dust. I fixed it under a layer of resin. Then I figured out that I still have to spray the last layer of matte varnish on the face. So, not to ruin the shine on the horn, I covered it with the liquid mask. a little bit of gloss to her eyes and lips, and the face was done. Not my best work, but still pretty cute in my opinion. Especially in comparison to the original. I like original Twyla very much, but the head shrinking just sells it for me. 12 days spent on just the shrinking process, but hell yeah, it was worth it. Doll customization is a full spa treatment for my dolls, so after we took care of the face, it is time to do the same for the body. I started with removing the silver markings, that came off quicker with a nail buffer than nail polish remover. Then I also sanded down all the plastic seams, factory numbers and panties. Just usuals. I also altered her groin and knee joints to expand the range of movement in her legs. Lastly, I get rid of her heels and toes, she won't be needing them anymore. I glued my girl in her permanent pose and I started the sculpting part. For that, of course, I used epoxy sculpt. Long story short, I covered all the joints and sculpted the hooves. 
My previous unicorn doll had the legs entirely based on horse legs. And my first plan was to make it similar here. But in the end, I decided that since I want to place her in a sitting position, human legs with just the hooves would look more elegant. Let's say that there can be few different stages of hybrids in my imaginary world. I let the epoxy cure completely, and after it did, I sanded down its surface to make the transitions as smooth as possible. I covered the body with three layers of pastel purple acrylic paint. Shading and blushing the body is not my favorite part of a project, but it does make a huge difference. I gave my girl some freckles on her cleavage, her back and few more just here and there on the body. I sprayed my doll with MSC for the last time and then I did to the hooves the same thing I did to the horn. White paint, which I also used on her nails, pink shading, UV resin, iridescent powder and resin on top. Pretty. I will get back to her later. Now it's time for the stand. Remember the saying about throwing logs under the feet? Let's throw one under our chica's butt. So she will have something to sit on. Of course I decided to create my log from scratch, because I am really determined to learn how to sculpt one day. I wanted it to be a hollow log. So I started with a thick sausage made from a tin foil. Then I pressed some super sculpey through a pasta maker and started building my um reverse burrito, I guess. When I got the proper shape, I did a first baking. After that, I spread a liquid sculpey as a bonding agent and I put a second layer of clay to build a thickness of the log. After the second baking, it was time to remove the foil. Yeah. yeah. Then I started adding clay slowly to recreate an uneven surface of a tree bark. At least I tried. My sculpting skill level is still pretty low. But as I said, I am very determined to elevate it, so I'm never avoiding an opportunity to practice. With a silicone tool, I added texture to the wood. And I even used one of our plants to help me texture my log even more. Okay, here it is, ready for third baking. I drilled a small hole and glued a thick wire in the cured clay. This will be a small branch growing from the log. Just to add something something to it. And why not add some polypores? So far so good. I gave my log a warm brown base color and I painted over it with some dark brown wash paint. It is very watery paint, so it runs into all the crevices and makes the texture on your model pop. When it dried, I used a dry brush technique with a little lighter shade of brown. And here's my finished log with painted polypores and base attachments glued in. 
So now we need the base. I didn't have a properly sized wooden brick, so I used magic. Perfect. I marked the wire placement and drilled two holes in the base. Then I super glued the log in place, remembering about leaving space between the base and the log itself. Space for the kitty litter, of course. I mixed a clean kitty litter with a wood glue and poured it onto the stand with duct tape borders. And on the next day, I had my ground. I just needed to sand down some sharp edges. I also had to make this deeper indentation, so my doll would be able to sit straight. The ground I painted with brown and the vertical surfaces of the stand with dark purple acrylics. I fixed everything with a layer of matte varnish. Ok, let's get back to the doll. I always loved this feature on horses, so I decided to glue some long fur over my girl's hooves. After all, there's nothing more magical than hairy ankles. I used the same wool colors as for her reroute and I glued the hair in rows, from white at the bottom to violet on top. Now let's remove the protective wrap and make a quick fix on the neck. I think I will cover it with some hair later. Speaking of hair, I cut the little fringe part shorter and the rest I tried to flatten down as much as possible. It wasn't an easy task, but it never is, cause I really suck at working with hair in general. But finally, with the help of the hair straightener, my tiny iron and gallons of hairspray, I managed to achieve a decent hairstyle. Time to sit on your log, little one! And she of course needed her tail. Ok, it was supposed to be a meadow, not some muddy desert, so the stand needed some greenery. I used some green and pink moss and some fake grass for miniature painters and dioramas makers. I also sculpted and painted those cute teeny tiny mushrooms. The only thing left were the butterflies. After all, I called it a butterfly meadow. I decided to make them from Angelina film, cause it is so darn pretty. I folded each piece in half, sandwiched it between a transfer paper and heated it gently with a hair straightener. Then I folded those in half again and cut out a wing shapes, which gave me two wings after unfolding. To draw some pattern on both sides of my butterflies, I used a light pad. I also used a sheet of plexi to make sure that I won't stain my pad with a permanent marker. Of course, I could leave it like this, but I am full of self-hatred, so I decided to also give my butterflies some bodies. I took a very thin wire and shaped the bodies from it, with two tiny antennas each. I was also thinking about adding all six legs, but I am not crazy, right? Next, I mixed some UV resin with a drop of black alcohol ink. Then I covered the wire with that resin and cured it under UV lamp. Sorry for the footage losing focus here, but even my camera thought it was stupid. I attached the wings to the bodies and covered them with a layer of UV resin. For more durability. 
Here you go, 17 of those suckers. And my camera obviously hates them. It was finally time to put them in their places. And with this step, my butterfly meadow was finished. I'm sorry, my drawing skill is very poor, but this is an actual concept sketch that I made for this project. And here's the finished piece. When I started working on her, I just wanted to get rid of this image from my head already. Make a room for new ideas, let's say. I wanted to make her, but didn't feel this urge to make her. Didn't have this, oh, this would be awesome feeling, you know. I thought to myself, this will be cute, fun, but not the type of custom that becomes someone's favorite. Now when she's finally finished, I really can see her as someone's favorite. She ended up better than I anticipated. I think I did really good job with her stand. The log, the grass, the butterflies and those cute tiny mushrooms, it all makes this project way more interesting in my opinion. The hairstyle is simple and the face up might not be my best job ever, but her simplicity works really nice with the scenery in general. So yeah, I'm pretty happy that I decided to give this concept a try. Sometimes you can think that something is not interesting enough, but if it comes back to the surface of your thoughts again and again, maybe it's a sign that it's worth to give it a try. Just maybe. Just a thought. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about my meh, whatever, let's do it project. If you like this pastel unicorn and her butterfly meadow, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your art-loving friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because more content is on its way. Thank you guys for watching and see you soon! Przynieść samochodu rzeczy, które jeszcze nie są w kocie i sierści.